Hi, this is Joe Collymore, and we're continuing our discussions about the Town of Hingham water acquisition. Uh, and in that regard, we have a Hingham resident with us, Dick Norman, as our guest. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Joe. And could you tell us a little bit about your background? How long have you lived in Hingham as a resident and, and a little bit about your professional background? So. Sure. Uh, I've been a resident here for about 40 years. I don't think that yet qualifies me as a townie. Uh, my professional background has been principally in small business uh, in the energy field. Uh, I was the vice president and treasurer of an underground natural gas storage company located in New York for about 40 years. Uh, uh, that was federally regulated. And I also am a founder, owner, uh, and uh, semi-retired person uh, with a company that owns and operates 11 small hydroelectric plants uh, that are located in northern New England. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm sitting here right now is the fact that that experience, I think, directly relates to the questions that are being raised about the proposed uh, Aquarian acquisition. Uh, in my capacity, I was both the chief financial officer, chief operating officer, uh, and uh, dealt with personnel, contracts, financing, regulatory issues. Thank you. So you've been following this water acquisition uh, study for quite some time now. Um, what's your overall view of the lay of the land as it relates to the process that you've observed thus far? Well, I think it's gone through a significant change. Uh, when I first beca became aware of it, uh, it was during the litigation period. Uh, at that point in time, I opposed it. I opposed the purchase because of the way in which the town was conducting the litigation. There also was a public statement made that the town could afford no more than $75 million for the acquisition. Uh, when the court finally ruled and established a value of $88 million, uh, I became more involved, initially believing that the purchase should not be made for financial reasons. But having now been involved for the better part of over a year, uh, I have become convinced that the town's financial plan and the plan was substantially modified from when it was originally conceived a year and a half or so ago, uh, is one that would provide potentially financial benefits to the town. However, in terms of where I stand, I still am sort of a twixt in between. I'd like to find a way to support the acquisition. But at the same time, I have concerns about the operations and governance of the facility. Uh, in my experience, uh, I've been involved in raising capital. Um, frequently, if you're gonna buy a project or you're going to buy a company, lawyers and consultants will all get together and work for many months. They'll get together for what's called a financial close. Everyone will congratulate themselves and the lawyers and the accountants walk away from the table. The problem then is the owner who's borrowed the money has to operate the company and achieve their financial projections. And that's the situation I believe Ingham is in right now. There are questions in my mind about whether or not town officials really appreciate the difficulty that will occur if the town does approve the purchase. What is going to be critical to the town is not just voting yes, but rather whether an appropriate person can be hired as the water supervisor. This is the person that's going to be responsible for transitioning to full operation and also responsible for governing the operation of the third party operating and maintenance company that is, in, that is proposed to be hired to at least initially run the water assets. That's the area where I think there are substantial questions. And as I say, I think many of the people are almost blasé in terms of looking at the difficulty of actually acquiring and then, uh, uh, and then implementing full ownership of the acquiring assets. I recently sat with uh, Selectman um, Karen Johnson, who um, shared part of the governance as it relates to the transition and that there's a permitting 
process that has to take place. So even though one may do the financial close, so to speak, getting that permit and effecting a smooth transition for the um, rate um, payers uh, is tantamount. With that in mind, um, what have you observed in the town's discussion about transition and governance? And what do you see as perhaps some of the challenges that they've got to address? That, that's an interesting question mm -hmm. because uh, recently both the water committee acquisition, the water company acquisition study committee, as well as a subcommittee of the advisory committee held public hearings. Uh, in those hearings, I think as a result of public comment and their ability to focus in a more detailed way than the selectmen previously had, mm -hmm. had, I think they identified that there will be a lot more that needs to occur during the transition period. I was surprised to learn in one of those meetings from Hingham's Town Council that if the vote is taken, as soon as that vote is taken, Hingham becomes the legal owner of the facilities. I had always thought that it might be weeks or months before a check was written, and at that point in time, the town would become the owner of the assets. Not true. Hmm. So at the time the town vote is taken, and, they, and they, they become the owner of the assets, there is a need to hire a water, excuse me, a water supervisor. There is a need to issue a request for proposal, an RFP, to identify an operating and maintenance person. There is a need to go to the DEP, and I think that's pretty much pro forma in terms of getting the, appro the transfer approval. Mm -hmm. There is also a need to arrange for both short-term financing. The town's proposal is to issue short-term debt for the first 12 months or a shorter period of time on an interest-only basis. Mm -hmm. And then that would be taken out by a 28 or 29-year long-term bond. And it would be um, in that period of time after the O&M company has been selected, after they've had an opportunity to identify and put their employees into tandem for an operating period that might be a week, it might be a month, so that they were familiar with the operations. And then essentially the critical point comes when Aquarian goes away fully and the town has full operating responsibility through the water supervisor and the O&M company. Uh, the selectmen in public meetings have acknowledged that this will be a lengthy period of time. I don't think anyone has yet put a number as to how many weeks or months it's going to be. My own personal view is that it's going to be at least six months and could be even longer before all of those things are taken care of. Taking a step outside the purview of the effects on Hingham, how do you see this decision affecting the neighboring towns of Hull and Cohasset? There's been a lot of discussion about that. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding that the Hingham selectman, particularly Selectman Johnson, has stated that there will be some sort of a either written agreement or statement of principles that address the concerns of Hull and Cohasset. Uh, clearly, they will not have a vote on the acquisition. They will have membership in a citizen's advisory board but that is something where it is advisory in nature, it's not binding. Um, my belief is that, that the selectmen who initially did not want to have an agreement have come to a point where they understand and I think intend to draft some sort of an agreement. Whether that will satisfy the residents of Hall and Cohasset, I don't know. But uh, I strongly advocated for that position that there be an agreement and I think it's one which would be in the interest of all three towns, because in the absence of that, if something does go wrong, you have nothing to point to. You know, recently um, we had a fire in Hull where two homes were completely destroyed. Um, there was no loss of human life, but I believe one or two uh, dear pets uh, perished. Um, 
what was most profound about this, this fire was an image of a fire hydrant that was dormant, not functioning. The cap was off, suggesting that it was offline. Um, whether or not it could have made a difference in saving the homes uh, remains to be seen, but it does go to the heart of the question of the infrastructure, uh, of the whole system, not only that which is in Hingham, but Hull and Cohasset, and to that homeowner who may have concerns about their hydrant, concerns about their water main, perhaps being older than 60, 70 years old. From your operational background, what, what can you say to those rate payers, um, at least as it regards this acquisition? Well, I don't pretend to know everything about water company. I, I have, a, I think, a very good idea about how to mm -hmm. operate a company. Uh, the particular point that you raise about the fire hydrant is one where, again, it was a learning process for me where this was addressed in one of the public meetings. And I learned that the fire hydrants are the responsibility of the town, not of Aquarian. At least that's my understanding. So in that particular instance, if that is, if my understanding is correct, then I don't think it was Aquarian or the water main, but rather potentially the town that may have been the party at fault. Uh, as I say, I want to underscore, sure. I don't know. As far as the infrastructure goes, I was surprised to learn. Uh, we, my wife uh, gets a copy of the, of the whole times. Uh, if you've read the recent edition, uh, there was an announcement, long article by Aquarian, that Aquarian has undertaken a fairly significant capital program to uh, replace existing lines that are under some of the sand dunes. Uh, I think it's almost a mile of replacement. Uh, they are, have drafted their article, their public statements, uh, are, are drafted in a fashion to assume Aquarian is going to complete this month long, this, this month long, several month long process. Um, I, I think that the operation of the water company, if the purchase does proceed, mm. is one where it will be run on what I call a socialized basis. This is the way Aquarian's capital program goes. Uh, they will approve a capital program. The cost, even though it may relate to Western Massachusetts, is socialized through Hull and Hingham as well. That's the way Selectman Johnson states that the, uh, the town-owned water assets would run. And it then comes down to a question of engineering studies and identifying where the attention should be placed as far as capital programs. Uh, my belief is that in the first year or two that the existing capital plans for Aquarian are going to be followed. What hasn't been specifically identified is what's going to happen after that. But the town, I think, is committed to make uh, uh, an annual capital expenditure in the initial year of $2.7 million and $2 million escalated at 5% per year thereafter. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, the town is able to achieve savings or if there's a need to accelerate those capital programs, then I think there is the capability to do that. Uh, what will come with it, as it would with Aquarian, is an increase in rates. The town of Hingham prides itself in um, the effective stewardship of its electric company and, and as such feels that they can do the same uh, for the water. Um, conversely, Aquarian is taking the position running a water company is not the same as running an electric company. Do you agree with that? A position from Aquarian, or do you agree with the position of Hingham? And again, you as the citizen of Hingham who will be called upon to cast your vote on April 22nd. Um, I think I'm probably a little bit in between, as, okay. as maybe I normally am. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, the business I'm in is the generation of electricity. Uh, we don't operate any distribution lines. Uh, we operate hydroelectric turbines. Uh, I'm also a part owner of a solar facility. 
So there's a distinction between generating electricity and distributing electricity. I, I think that Aquarian is right in the sense that it is different. Um, the fact that you're maintaining underground mains, mm -hmm. the fact that you have water wells that have to be, that have to be maintained, the fact that you have a, a different metering system, um, many issues like that. The one response I would give though is, and the town has well publicized this, that there are many, many towns in, in the state, of, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that do own their, their companies and they either are able to individually manage them or have identified third party companies to run their facilities. The challenge that I see is identifying in the initial phases, an appropriate operating and maintenance company, mm -hmm. and then having a contractual agreement that is specific enough that, that it will address those situations and assure the town that the facility will be operated to the standards that Aquarian has shown they can. So I think when, when I look at the two citizen groups, Keep Aquarian, that favor it, that opposes the purchase, and I'll call them the opponents, okay. and the citizens for Hingham Water, which I'll call the proponents. The opponents, I think, sincerely believe that the town is ill-suited to run the water company. Uh, there are a lot of people that I know who are in that group. Uh, some of them are former selectmen. They just don't think that municipal ownership is the right way to go. And even though they acknowledge there may be some financial benefits, they question whether the risk is worth it. On the other hand, you have friends of mine who strongly believe that this water asset should be publicly owned. They can point to the fact that the town is well run, and they say, uh, we, we think that Hingham can do it. Uh, my concern is that a sufficient number of knowledgeable people, because I don't think that a lot of people within the current town government have a lot of business experience, that they draw upon appropriate business and technical experience in formulating the agreement to hire the operating and maintenance company. To me, that's absolutely clear. If I knew who the company was, if I could look at a specific contract agreement as to, as to how they were obligated to run the company, I'd vote not right now. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that at the town meeting, there will not be an operating and maintenance company identified. An RFP won't be issued until after the town meeting, at least that's my understanding. And so that's where the challenge is. Um, I characterize it as sort of a leap of faith that if you do believe in the competency of the government, uh, and I am encouraged that in recent meetings, the selectmen appear to have a more open-minded approach, which they've demonstrated in some of the meetings. And that's going to be the challenge for the voters who haven't already made up their minds. You know, that's a great point you've just made about um, how the town officials have extended themselves. Um, my understanding is that they recently uh, ventured over to the town of Hull and at a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen in Hull, the Hingham Board of Selectmen made a presentation, a public forum, if you will. Uh, and similarly, um, I think and hope that they may continue to open up the public dialogue, if you will. Uh, certainly to the credit of Aquarian, they're making every effort to give, again, all the communities that are impacted by this decision an opportunity to come to their forums um, and to address their concerns. Dick, there's a lot of messaging uh, going on right now. Um, one is, you know, the Keep Aquarian uh, messaging. Um, and it really begs the question about how are we looking at and re responding to these messages? Uh, certainly from the town of Hingham officials, their mantra is slower and lower. Uh, in the case of uh, Keeping Aquarian, um, I would venture that um, it's all about more than just running an electric company, that it requires a certain level of expertise. Um, what's your overall take on this messaging that's coming out, particularly on the, the Keep Aquarian side, and, and what would you um, express as 
points of, uh, of concern? Well, I, I, I think both sides, the mm-hmm. opponents and the <clears throat> opponents, have recognize, have understandably pushed their points of view. Uh, I can cite as, as one example, uh, in recent Keep Aquarian uh, literature, uh, they point to the fact that funding for schools may be endangered. Mm. Technically, I think that's correct because these will be gen- general obligation bonds. If the enterprise fund that is used for the water company cannot effectively operate it, if they can't fund the debt that's incurred, the town would be liable. But the reality is that if, in fact, they turned out that the debt service obligation of the enterprise fund was, was threatened, the simple remedy is to raise the rates. Um, so uh, an- another example. Uh, so what you're saying in that example that you've just made is that even though technically one could um, rob Peter to pay Paul because of the enterprise fund in and of itself self-sustaining, it could raise rates and not have to take money from yeah, the schools. Yeah. Similarly, uh, from day one, if you look at the selectmen's presentations, there is a highlight that says 55 cents of every water rate dollar goes out of town. That's true. But what isn't said is that if the town acquires the water company, an equivalent amount or even a little bit more is still going to go out of town because you're going to have to meet the debt service obligations from people who don't live in town. So, as I say, I think it's probably understandable that the town is trying to advance its point of view. Aquarian and Keep Aquarian are advancing their points of view. I think they may have gone beyond the the reasonable bounds in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, when it comes down to it, and you look behind each one of those claims, there generally are some answers to that. Um, I can't underscore more the importance, I think, with regard to the process that's going to have to be followed to identify an appropriate operating and maintenance company, and even more importantly, to draft an agreement that is going to effectively work where the town is not going to come to a number of legal disagreements with the O&M company. I mentioned uh, earlier that I had gone online with regard to Veolia and their lawsuit with Plymouth. And it highlights again the fact that, they're, that the devil is, is in the details. the details. And those details have not been addressed. As I mentioned earlier, I have optimism that if the purchase is approved, that the selectmen are going to carry through with what they've stated in public meetings that there will be a more open process. But ironically, even if you get everything right, um, as a private businessman, I would have great frustration in operating under the governance structure. It has to be followed because it's town debt. But in many respects, and this is a heresy probably, Mm -hmm. but there could be too much public input to run this company, the water assets, you need to be driven by the operating, the capital, and the technical requirements. And there's really very little public input in my mind other than potentially arguing about where capital should be put and how much capital should be, should be expended. But there will be a long process. There's going to be a lot of public meetings uh, that I think, frankly, probably aren't necessary in order to effectively run an operation like this. Is there anything else that you want to share uh, with our viewers that um, they should be mindful of when they step into the poll? I think, Joe, uh, and if I address the viewers, uh, I think I can only repeat what I've said, and that is there will not be certainty at the town meeting. Uh, if If you are concerned about how the town is, if you believe that the town cannot effectively operate the facility, then I think you've got to vote no. On the other hand, if you believe in public ownership of water assets, if you look at the success of other communities, although legitimately you can point to 
situate with brown water. Yesterday, I went online and there were two companies that responded to an initial request for proposal in 2018, Woodward and Kern and Veolia. And if you were to go online and put in Veolia versus Plymouth, you would come up with a number of articles that point out the importance of properly drafting and operating a maintenance agreement. I would say it over and over and over again. And I want to emphasize that I'm not pointing to Veolia because in the case of Plymouth, they don't operate the water system. They operate a wastewater treatment plant, which is very, very different. But if you take a look at some of the dis disagreements between the town and Veolia, it points out you have to have an effective agreement. And my hope is that if the purchase is approved, that the selectmen are going to carry through, they're going to find the right people to properly draft this agreement and identify a good company. And if they do, then I think it can be a success. Dick, I want to thank you so much for your time and joining us oh, here thank you. on the program.